mentioned here that uh, uh, we have tried to, on one hand, help the suicide, uh, the, the farmers, suicide families around uh, the Yavadmal region, and not by simply giving some donations to them, but uh, initiating some regular source of earning for them at their own uh, uh, villages, respective places. We also conducted eye uh, camps uh, for workers uh, around the industrial area because uh, the workers mostly come from the surrounding areas and uh, fairly successful camp there. The NGOs uh, of the region, uh, we have tried to be facilitated with them, uh, organized uh, even very recently, just about 15 days back, when we encouraged them to showcase their, their contributions to the society. So in a humble manner, we have this particular forum of Vidarbha Industry Association has been functioning and trying to contribute our mind uh, into the whole process. Today we have uh, you know, the champions of the cause, probably uh, we can take them as role models because I was talking to Sir Samuel and he, was, he mentioned to me that by now they have helped almost a lakh families with, with the housing issues apart from the sanitation and uh, college for girls in the schools and things of that sort, which I think is something which we would like to pick up some leaves from your book and then uh, try and copy and in our own uh, way in a small area comprising of about 11 districts of Vilarba region in Maharashtra. Maybe we can also probe into areas where we can synergize our efforts with you where uh, uh, probably the, the financial inputs because we can see you're very resourceful but practical implementation of your project uh, our, our member industries, their workforce, uh, maybe the children of those uh, uh, our families. We see that a lot of volunteers also are associated with your activities. So, which uh, I think more commendable because simply mobilizing funds for these uh, initiatives is fine. I mean, uh, a lot of people specialize in that. They post, I have a donation leke a gaya, wo ka donation leke a gaya, and things of that sort. But Finally, what matters is uh, what benefit the society has really got and which section of society has uh, got. Uh, that really gives you satisfaction worth probably millions of <coughs> rupees. Uh, we as we are able, certainly we have those values. We would not count our success in terms of how much of, uh, how many crores of rupees that we have been able to mobilize and pump into the society. But as to how many families that we have been able to infect, is expected of whether they, they have the background of you know coming from from the industrial workers community or maybe in general to remote areas like Lord Chiroli and even as I just mentioned a humble attempt at even Yawal Mal where in maximum societies where suicides were reported from one single district in the report. So with these words I welcome uh, the audience here. They have by coming and attending this program they have shown their interest in uh, CSR activities in some or other manner, and uh, we would we would love to see you associating with our forums activities. Uh, maybe and they can uh, uh, apart from uh, synergizing at first with Sarita, we would also would like to have, undertake some independent activities at our local level, and we look forward to your valuable cooperation in that respect. Welcome once again. Thank you, Mr. Atul Pandey. Those were very encouraging words and indicate a clear new direction that uh, BIA is taking in the area of CSR, which is so important to participate in the development of the country. And definitely, here your focus will be with us, as you rightly said. And that is why we are here to see how we could join hands together to see the development of Vidarbha taking off. Uh, as we progress with the program, uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, inform and ready to uh, uh, inform that uh, Mrs. Amrita Padnavis, who was to be with us today, is unable to make it due to last minute exigency. So we really do uh, regret to inform you about that. But she has expressed keen interest to be back here. So very soon, probably if not in this forum, in another future forum, she has herself expressed a uh, keen desire. We met her, our team actually recently met her in, uh, at the site uh, close to Phase 3 and uh, Paulus.
founders and other villages surrounding the area where they, are, they have shown interest to begin work. So we will definitely inform more about the work that we are starting with them. So there, that is also adding additional interest to the work that we wish to do in Vilarma since the CM office has also started taking some keen interest. But um, as we progress, let us progress with the day's program and I would like to uh, invite to the dais now uh, our Managing Director Mr. Rajan Samuel to deliver the first keynote address. So Rajan Samuel, Managing Director, Habitat for Humanity India. Good evening, friends, and uh, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, we lead it on the diet, uh, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. Uh, I do have a slide deck, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to minimize my slides so that we have more time for interaction. Uh, Habitat firmly believes uh, that housing is the foundation for breaking the cycle of poverty. When you look at poverty, poverty has different phases, right? And we believe that when a poor person owns a house, you know, uh, then I think everything else follows. Uh, so our uh, vision is that everyone, every Indian, should have a decent place to live. Uh, I think the numbers are mind-boggling. <laughs> you know, if you look at, uh, you know, almost 59.6 million families lack adequate housing in India. And globally, globally, there are almost 1.6 billion people live in poverty housing. Um, 4.3 million people die due to indoor air pollution. We looked at the video. 110 uh, million houses needed to be built to ensure the vision of the Prime Minister housing for all by 2022. Sanitation crisis. We have been around for the last uh, 33 years, and uh, we have. Uh, of footprints in more than 20 states. Uh, what we have done is just a drop in the ocean. I mean, we have uh, impacted maybe uh, 200,000 families, uh, but the need is great, right? So uh, this is a kind of a dashboard. This is basically what we have done. So people who have been provided shelter or shelter-related activities about 195,000. This is the data uh, as on 31st of December 2016. <laughs> Uh, home bills or repair 174,000, 174,000. Sanitation units 144,000. We have a correlation called sensitized to sanitize. And if you look at the number, almost uh, 9.3 million, 90, you know, uh, 90 lakhs. Uh, we have 162 employees, and we have plenty of volunteers who come and work with us. Uh, again, like I said earlier, you know, what we have done so far is just a drop in the ocean. More needs to be done. And I think you and I together with our association, with other key stakeholders, can make a difference. Uh, you know, I, I, it's, uh, I just want to share this uh, story. Uh, you know, a, a mother and a child, they were taking a, a stroll in the, on the beach, on the seashore. Uh, suddenly, the, the mother uh, looks at the child, and uh, the child is busy collecting broken shells. You know, that's what kids normally do. Right, and then uh, the mother tells the child, you know, all along you've been the one to get one of a, uh, you know, starfish. I can see a starfish there, why don't you go and get one of the starfish? No response from the child. And then, uh, you know, it goes, the conversation goes on and on. I think, I think that is what I see in India. You know, I think, you know, I, I, I grew up in the microfinance sector, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you know, I started something very small. And I believe that uh, sometimes we have to give up something or we have to give up something in order to gain something better and bigger. I think that's what I've learned in the development world. Like the child, the child is clinging on to this broken shell. The mother is saying, you want to you know, get hold of a starfish, there's a starfish, go and catch it. But the child is, cannot because she is holding on to this broken shell. I think that's what I see in the developing world today. Resources are there, people with vision and passion are there, the community is there in need. Now how do we get everybody together so that we don't worry about the broken shell, but we follow the starfish, we follow the vision that you know, we want to make a, a build a vibrant and uh, you know strong India. Uh, rebuilding lives in Maharashtra. You know, I mean, we work in our 20 states, but we want to just focus on Maharashtra. I think we've been uh, working in Maharashtra for the last uh, 12 to 15 years. Uh, we have impacted more than one lakh hundred thousand individuals uh, in Maharashtra alone uh, by building houses, sanitation units, and also providing the water beads. I just want to talk about the water beads. You know, when we started this, uh, Nilesh is here, Nilesh can talk more about it. 
you know, when one village, uh, you know, we found that, uh, you know, the man had three wives. And uh, one is a, you know, is a legal wife, and he had two wives called water wives. And that's not very far from me, it's only 175 kilometers from uh, Mumbai, where I live. Water wives. Now, when we introduced this, this cost uh, maybe uh, 2,850 rupees. When we introduced this uh, water wheels, the purpose of this uh, project was A, to sensitize the men that they should also bring water home. Right? I think now we can see that, you know, I mean, I've been talking to Nirish. Now, you know, men don't want to carry the water on their head, right? And in, in most villages, right in Maharashtra, we know that women spend almost six to seven hours every day just to fetch maybe 15 liters of water. So when we introduce this project, we realize now even boys and men are able to carry it because it's like carrying a trolley bag, right? You know, and it carries 15 liters of water. Now, what you're saying is that, we aid need to identify the needs in the community, and the needs could be very small. I mean, they talk about what, 2,800 rupees, but look at the impact it has. As long as we have the larger vision of transforming the communities, as long as we have that bigger vision of hitting the starfish, <laughs> I think we can make it work together. Well, in uh, Maharashtra, I think, uh, you know, this is uh, your family with the map. And, uh, you know, let me take you to Karjit. You know, Karjit, I think we have done more than 3,500 families. I've been there many times. Water is a problem. I think uh, earlier we were discussing. Access to water is critical as one of the key interventions. Again, you know, one of the things, what the lessons learned is that, that we need to look at holistic development. Now, if you look at impact with Vidarbha, you know, impact stands for something. It's an acronym. Now, I stands for integrated approach, you know. While our domain expertise are shelter and sanitation, we firmly believe that we need to address the whole issue of, uh, of livelihood, for example. I know this region is, uh, you know, basically the livelihood is, uh, you know, dependent on the land, agro-based enterprises. That I stands for integrated approach. So that means you have to have a holistic approach. So we are talking about impacting this region, impacting 11 districts in the region. I think we need to keep our eyes open for an integrated, holistic approach. Number two, M stands for multi-sector, multi-donor, and multi-intervention. One of the things I've learned in the development world is that you know, there are certain things can happen in two years, there are 